The topic is the science of yoga as in Thirumandra by Dr. M. Balagaramalingam, MBBS. What is yoga? Yoga is the science of the mind and soul. Yoga links the body with the mind, the mind with the Atma, and finally Atma with the Paramatma, the universe. It is the treasure of our yogis and rishis. Yoga, science of sciences, is too comprehensive in its nature and too profound in its scope of teachings to be fitted into the framework of any particular philosophy, religion or belief, ancient or modern. Now, this paper is actually about two hours, okay? I've got 25 minutes, I'll try and do justice. Okay, if I've done that, I must be a super teacher and you must be all super listeners. All right. Yoga is a much misunderstood and abused term these days. Yoga, let it be understood, is a sacred word. It signifies both the means and the end. It is the aim of human existence. It is to live yoga that one is born. It will be clear how yoga is not just bending and stretching the limbs in various postures, as most of us believe nowadays. It's just that an exercise. We have forgotten the, the spiritual nature of yoga. Yoga is not merely a practice or a set of practices, but the whole science of life itself. We are living a muted life. Yoga offers the whole life. Yoga promises to cure all our diseases, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, all of them. Yoga promises perfection. Yoga promises perennial bliss shorn of all misery. Yoga is a word from the ancient pre-Sanskrit or pre-Tamil languages. With uh, some corrections if somebody can correct me because I'm just reading this from my guru's work and we have spent about one and a half months Trying, he trying to teach me what he knows from this paper. Actually, Dr. Bala is working with the government and in the evenings he goes to the private hospitals to practice, to do his locum. So in between his patients, I'll be sitting down there in his clinic, he will be having a tutorial. Sometimes in the wee hours, like two, three o'clock in the morning. So it uh, really got into me after about a week or so that I was really into it more than him. Yeah, because I will keep on asking him, when is the best time to come and see him? Because he doesn't have time and I don't have time. Both of us were working. Anyway, I think we have done a good job. The word yoga is also used to describe the different yogic techniques employed and the different disciplines that are used to facilitate the awareness and experience of the body, mind and spirit integration. Yoga has for thousands of years had a holistic understanding of human being, its subtle physiology and connection between mind and body. The vast philosophies and disciplines of yoga have remained essentially the same for thousands of years. Currently, Western science is exploring the benefits of yoga and its effects on mind and body with keen interest. Scientific research has been expanding at a modest rate for at least the last three decades. We all know that. Now, since when was this yoga was in existence? Yoga is the world's most ancient science. Modern research confirms its discoveries. Yoga, no doubt being an ancient science, practiced widely for more than 10,000 years, mainly in the Indian subcontinent, but also has spread its wing to other regions like China, Russia, and so forth, especially to Southeast Asia. In fact, yoga is the yoga in fact, yoga is there since time immemorial from the start of creation itself, but the knowledge came into existence from the period of Patanjali and Tirumula. Many sages have discovered the science of yoga through their deep penance or tapas, tapas sorry. but both of its theoretical and practical aspects were explained in detail to eight ancient sages by Lord Nandi. 
Among these ancient age sages, Padanjali and Tirumular are the two discreet disciples of Lord Nandi. I don't know why they were discreet, but they were chosen by Lord Nandi. They have gifted this world with their great books, namely Yoga Sutra in Sanskrit language by Patanjali and Thirumandaram in, la in Tamil language by Thirumula. Both of these books are embedded with spiritual rules, regulations, techniques and methods of yoga and as a pathway to attain moksha or mukti as the final liberation from the universal cycle of life. Now in this, Trimulas, we talk about Trimulas uh, Trimandram and uh, in the third mandram the Atanga Yoga system comes in. Padanjali currently being popularized as the father of yoga presented the Yoga Sutra to humanity. Along with Padanjali, his counterpart Trimulas compiles the principles of yoga in Tamil language in poetic verses in the third chapter or third Anga of his book Tirumandram. Both of them delineated yoga as eight path folds or otherwise known as the Atanga Yoga, namely Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyagara, Dhanana, Dhyana and Samadhi. In his verses, Yama Niyama meaning Nila Adhanam, Nayamuru Pranayamam, Pratyagaram, Sayamudharani Dhyanam Samadhi, Ayamuru Mattangam Avadamame, Tirumandram. I know try with the rindle. in the verses like In fact, if you look at it after reading this, after going through two years, close to two years of Atanga Yoga, I realized one thing that Atanga Yoga is the manual for human life. It's a manual, other margam. It is the manual for how to live this life to attain spirituality and to go back to Godhead. The Atanga Yoga system of Sage Patanjali and Tirumula gives us a wonderful roadmap of, for exploration, exploring yoga. In simple words, yoga is a fantastic system for physical, mental, emotional and spiritual health. It is a science which provides a logical step-by-step -step process for a new understanding of ourselves and of the universe around us. The history of yoga remains veiled in a mystical culture of an ancient far off land. The roots of yoga do lie in the ancient culture of India where they remain firmly planted even till this day. Okay, we shall not go into Trimula Satanga Yoga compared to Patanjali Yoga Sutra because my good friend has already compared it and he has definitely said that Thirumulas, Thirumandra means comprehensive, much more in detail. So we shall not go into that. Let's go into understanding the Atanga Yoga. Yoga is a gradual development of personality by way of ascending different steps of self-integration achieved by the adjustment and adaptation of oneself with the environment in which one lives at any given moment of time. So, the system of Atanga Yoga proceeds very carefully, stage by stage. As I said, eight different stages. And these stages, as we saw earlier, are the well-known limbs of yoga, or the angas of, as they are known, Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyavara, Dharana, Dhyana and Samadhi, among which the Yamas and the Niyamas are regarded as the foundation of yoga. The very foundation of Atanga Yoga is Yama and Yama. The don'ts and do's and how to make use of the divine. What do we do to attain the path much more easily by practicing the Niyama? So, the system of Atanga Yoga proceeds very carefully state by state, sorry, among which the Yama and the Niyamas are regarded as the foundation of yoga. Together, they do not constitute just an ethical discipline, as people generally say. It is just not ethics or how to behave, how to do 
good things and not to prolong our lives and doing the bad things. It's not just that, it's beyond that. There are scientific requirements and logical stages which are unavoidable in one's life. And we do not escape them merely by calling them ethical or moral. Unlike some of some religions where they have the, the commandments and all that, where they do, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that. Okay? We have said it long, long, long before them, not just merely 2,000 years ago. They are necessary requirements because they are the means of self-adjustment with the state of affairs in which we are placed at present. Thirumular in the third tundra of Thirumandram revealed the inner signs of Yama and Yama. They are the ethical percepts set forth in the Thirumulas Thirumandram as the first and second of the eight limbs of Ashtanga Yoga. His moral code describes the qualities we need in order to reach the goal of yoga, to still the fluctuations of mind and rest in our true nature. Being good is our true nature. Believe me, we were all born good. I don't know what happened along the way. <laughs> okay, we have forgotten, but we have fallen into the rut that we have become bad. Okay? It emphasizes that a mind filled with love, truth, and generosity is a mind that can become quiet. I repeat that. He emphasizes that a mind filled with love, truth, and generosity is a mind that can become quiet. Let's reflect upon that. No fights, no guilt, no neediness thereon. Trimula shows us the way how we could progress from practicing the 10 restraints, yama, and to the 10 observances, the niyamas. In his verses 554 regarding yamas, Trimula says, Kollan poi kuran talvilan yengudan, nallan adakkamudayan nadinjaya, vallan paluttunban masilan thakkamam, Illan Yamatidayil Nindrani. It tells all about the don'ts, what we are not supposed to do. Kolla, you don't kill. You do not have to kill some, some other living things to survive in this Mother Earth. It is not meant to be. Okay? Poyipura, you don't have to lie. You do not lie. Kalavila, you don't steal. Inkudan, you have you 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 masilada kunam. You have to have that. Don't be, don't have uh, feelings or thoughts which are of a bad nature. Okay. Then from yamas to niyamas, there are ten restraints that progresses towards the ten observances. Turmai arul un surukkam porai sevvai vaimai nilavai valatthalai machivai kamam kalavu kolai enbavai enakkaan bavai nemi eeraindu niyatthanamai I'm sorry, Niyamattanami. He says that, Thuimai, so the things that we must do, Thuimai, Arul, Oon Surukkam, Porai, Patience, Porai, Patience, Sevai, Vaimai, Nilaimai, Kamam Atta Nilai, Kalavu Atta Nilai, Kolai Atta Nilai, the do's. He was mentioning first, but the do's, now the do's. Then it goes one beyond. How do you attain this? Can you do it on your own? But well, possible in this Kaluga that you stay pay with patience. Sorry. You can do it, but with divine help, it becomes easier. So he goes one beyond to say that. Davam, Sevam, Sandodam, Atigam, Danam, Sivan, Tan Viradame, Sitan, the Kelvi, Madam, Siva Pusai, Unmadi, Solir, Aind, Nivam, Palasayin, Niamat, Tanamai. He is telling them, you can do all this, Anal, 
if you really want to achieve this with much ease, with a lot of spirituality, Javam say, Javam say, Sandoshamane in the Varki Anubavi, Atigam, Atigam Pesil, Atigam Manatapur, Dhanam Kudu, Vradamir, Sitan the Kirvi Kail, Yelayu, Yetukulade, and Yamba over the Chenapla Pole, Apasola. If we say, the in the path niyama renda on the level if you can do this your attainment or your your practice of yama and yama comes easier it's not telling you can't do it but with this it becomes easier then it goes on to the third anga which is asanas the yoga asanas are so very well known especially in these days throughout the world practically that they have almost tended to replace the very purpose of yoga proper and many people imagine that yoga asanas are themselves the goal of yoga people think that if you are doing yoga you are actually you know you're actually going to a different spiritual world no it is not that yoga is what they are doing nowadays especially in my country where it has become big business funny by the Chinese who are not Hindus they open up big schools and they are reaping their money our art our culture they are reaching their money okay but let them be okay but they are missing one point the most important point the spirituality in yoga asanas yoga does not mean yoga asanas though yoga asanas constitute a very important link in the practice of yoga it is a position comfortable for the practice of concentration you sit in asanas for concentration which is permitted in the light of the aim of yoga and not just a position of ordinary physical comfort Thirumular highlights 126 plus asanas eight basics eight principal asanas ten asanas which are surya namaskaram and 100 plus asanas for which you can take some to cure diseases or to control at least some diseases in his verse 563 about asanas he says patiram pomugam pangayam kesari sottiram viram sugadanam oreyade uttamam mudu asanam yettu yettu pattodu nooru pala asaname he says this about asana Next level is pranayama. Pranayama is the harmonization of breath or vital force. Prana is the vital energy and the process of subduing of its activities is known as pranayama. The pranas are the energies that propel themselves outwardly in terms of objects through the vehicle of the body and they have a say of their own in the activity in which they are involved. Thirumula says in 571 about pranayama, Etu irakki irugalum poorikkum, kaatre pidikkum kanakku arivar illai, kaatre pidikkum kanakku arivar arukku kootre udaikkum kuri aduvame. Says very clearly in, in uh, verse 571 about the, the importance of the very importance of pranayama. And the fifth limb is Pratyahara. So do I have much time? Uh, probably five minutes. Okay, Pratyahara. The, there are total of four Pratyahara, namely Indriya Pratyahara, Karma Pratyahara, Pranic Pratyahara, and Mano Pratyahara. I'll have to conclude this because I sh I'm sure that most of you know about the eight limbs. Shall I go straight into the, the, the last few sentences where I, I must say this out. Okay, tra traditional branches of yoga. 
Under the Ayurvedic system, there are four main primary yoga branches from which most of the types of yoga emerge. For the sake of convenience and clarity of understanding, we generally speak of different methods of yoga approach to life's problem. The better known methods are Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Raja Yoga, and Jnana Yoga. While the emphasis is laid on different aspects of yoga in these methods, yoga is basically the same. That is, inner purification and progressive elimination of the ego, clouding the truth, shining within. I repeat that sentence again. While the emphasis is laid on different aspects of yoga in these methods, yoga is basically the same. That is, inner purification and progressive elimination of the ego, clouding the truth, shining within. Now, let's look at some of the modern yoga styles. Yoga has erupted around the world in, in the matter of just a few short decades. During this time, many new practitioners have emerged with their own independent thoughts on the practices of yoga and some being quite ambitious as well as business savvy have created large institutions and garnered much recognition in the fairly, in fairly short order. Many of these new styles of yoga have been branched with the stem of the originator's name like Sivananda Yoga, Bikram Yoga, Amit Yoga, Kalire Tri Yoga, Satyananda Yoga and the ever popular Iyengar Yoga. Other countless new varieties bear the same name that can be vaguely associated with the yoga tradition in some way or another like Ananda Yoga, Dhru Yoga, Astanga Yoga, Astanga Vinaya, Vinyasa Yoga, Jiva Mukti Yoga and Ananda Yoga. Okay, the understanding on the seven chakras in the yoga practice. Chakras are energy centers. Although the most people have heard of seven chakras, there are actually 140 in the body. The human body is a complex energy form. In addition to the 114 chakras, it also has 72,000 nadis or energy channels along which vital energy or the prana moves. When the nadis meet at different points in the body, they form a triangle. We call this triangle a chakra, which means wheel. We call it a wheel because it symbolizes growth, dynamism and movement. So even though it is actually a triangle, we call it a chakra. Some of these centers are very powerful, while others are not as powerful. At different levels, these energy centers produce different qualities in, in, in a human being. Fundamentally, any spiritual path can be described as a journey from the base chakra called the Muladhara, which is located at the base of the spine to the Sahasra, which, locate, which is located at the top of the head. Okay? Let me conclude by saying this. The science of yoga, yoga as the art of living. The worldly enjoyment of the human being are tainted with two major defects. Firstly, all earthly joys and fleeting, temporary in nature. Secondly, every enjoyment is mixed simultaneously with the measure of misery. Now, yoga guarantees at the end of the journey, perpetual bliss totally unmixed with sorrow, it is not worth, is it not worthwhile? In fact, all human striving, knowingly or unknowingly, is directed only towards the state of perpetual and unending bliss. The basic aim of all human endeavors is the same, though the effort is often directed along mistaken channels resulting in wrong results. World has now widely accepts the benefits of yoga and has placed it as one of the important practices of complementary medicine. According to WHO, the World Health Organization, total health should 
include physical, mental, and social well-being. Yoga views health as essential and, out and, and an outcome of having found a balance between our total personality and the world around us. In conclusion, in the process of learning and practicing yoga, habits and ways of being can be or modify on their own. This is not to say there is no resistance to letting go of old pressures or that we do not have to use intelligence to free ourselves from aspects of our life that are no longer appropriate. Rather, the energy of yoga and the awareness it brings make more obvious of what is and is not conducive to our well-being. The day-to-day -day practice of yoga gives us messages that are very difficult to ignore. Thank you.